So what we're going to do in this problem is find the pi of the species. Now the pi of the species is the pH or the point at which this peptide species is going to have a total net charge of zero, right? And the way I like to do this is by organizing the pKa's in an orderly fashion, right? And then I want to write down what is it going to look like when it's protonated and what is it going to look like when it's deprotonated, right? And so when it's protonated, the C terminus over here, which is a carboxyl group, is going to have a zero charge. However, when it's deprotonated, it's going to have a negative one charge. Same thing with aspartic acid. It's going to have a negative one charge when it's protonated and a zero or deprotonated and a zero charge when it is protonated. Histidine, on the other hand, has a positive one charge when it's protonated, but has a zero charge when it's deprotonated. Cysteine has a zero charge when it's protonated, but a negative one charge when it's deprotonated. And then with lysine and the N-terminus, they're both going to be positive one charge when pronated and a zero charge when depronated, right? So I want to find the middle point, the middle pH, at which these, these are going to add up to zero. Now say I pick a pH that's in between the C-terminus and aspartic acid, or like for example, three, right? It's going to cut it right here. This means that the C-terminus, for the majority part, is going to be deprotonated, right? However, everything else is going to be protonated because this pH is lower than the rest, right? So if we have a negative one add up to a positive one, positive one, positive one, we get a total charge of positive two. That means the pH three is way too low. Now say we pick a, a pH that's uh, in between lysine and cysteine, right? So we say pH of nine, right? So it's gonna cut it right here. What that means is that the groups over here are going to remain pronated, so positive one, positive one, but everything else is going to be deprotonated. So we get a negative one, negative one, and another negative one compared to two positive ones. So that's going to be a negative one charge, right? So we don't want that. We want something that's in between. So say we pick a pH between histidine and cysteine, right? So pH of seven, right? It's going to cut it right here. So everything up above it is going to be deprotonated. So we have a total of negative two on this side. And then on the bottom side, below pH of seven, we have a zero positive one positive one. So that's a positive two charge, right? So that means pH cut it, pH of seven cut it perfectly, right? Now, is that the pi of peptide? No, it's not, right? We want something that's in between. We want the actual real number. And the way to do that, a good estimate, is by finding the two closest pKa's, right? So the pKa that's right above, right below pH seven, which is histidine at six, and the pH and the pKa that's right above seven, which is that of cysteine, which is eight point three, right? So take those two, add them up together, and average them, right? And so what this gives us is fourteen point three over two, which then gives us seven. 0.15. And if we just use significant figures over here, we're going to have a 7.2. 7.2, that is going to be our PI, right? And so this is how you find the PI. You just kind of organize it in a way where you have pronated, depronated, and split it at the right point where the charges add up to zero.